Welcome to Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole, hosted by two nationally published Atlanta interior designers, Joanne Kandrak and Kelly Cole. These energetic women are also world travelers, charity givers, and bloggers with a wealth of information to share and stories to tell about the interior design world. Okay, now just a warning, this is going to be fun and not too serious. After all, they still do have an interior design business running at full speed. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 12 of Inside Design with Kendra and Cole. Today, our topic is why start a blog? Um, What is a blog? Why we started one back in 2009? Um, We consider a blog like an online journal. If you look it up, uh, a blog, um, the definition says a regularly updated website or web page, typically one run by an individual or small group that is written in an informal or conversational style. So I seriously remember sitting like it was yesterday, sitting in my home office before we had a real office and um, chatting with with my husband, Mike, and he's telling me what a blog is. I'm like, I don't get get it. it. What do you mean? It's not a website. It's a like what it's is it a diary? People are just writing crap. I mean, what? I don't get it. And it took me a while to, but when we were in the beginning of the uh, kind of the blog movement, some of our, some of our designer friends were there before us. Yeah, we decided to try it. So we thought, well, let's, what what do we really want to talk about? Like, what do we, and it was just anything design related. We, you know, we did travel stuff. We did project. It was kind kind of like what we talk about now on the podcast, but podcasts weren't really around then. Yeah, just kind of sharing stuff and, um, you know, it, it really inspired people. People liked it. And we were just kind of doing it. Just it was another for way for, I think, our clients, too, to get to know us. Because it was a totally creative outlet that wasn't always about design. It, it may yeah. have been about your tri- latest trip to Italy or, yeah. you know, what, something we saw that was cool or And I whatever. think a lot of blogs did start out being about design. Mm-hmm. And then now, I think, like, dentists have blogs. Like... Talking, different businesses have blogs for different reasons. Talking about topics in their industry. Yeah. yeah. So it's a way to learn and it's... it's, it's so great. we thought for those of you who um, aren't blog savvy or are maybe thinking about starting a blog, I think blogs are still very relevant. They, they, um, you might not he- hear, but I think we, I, do you think the industry is kind of overloaded with blogs or do you think... You know, uh, sometimes if I'm researching, let's say, a a vendor, and Mm -hmm. I go to their website, if I see blog, that tells me that they're doing a little bit more Mm -hmm. or above and beyond, and it kind of gives me an insight to them. Because, you know, you're not always necessarily buying from from buying a product, but you're buying from people. So you kind of want to see what they're... And you want to buy from an expert. Yeah. So I I like when I see a business that has a blog. It, It gives them an extra level a little of, more credibility a little bit of something so, so that's one there's lots of reasons why to start a blog and um so we thought we'd kind of go through them and then kind of share our experiences and what it's yeah. done for our business um so so okay. i think in the beginning what you're, you we wanted to attract an audience yeah right? so it's a great marketing tool yeah um it costs relatively nothing mm-hmm um, your blogs can be shared by other people. And, and the great thing is it lives on forever. Yes. A blog that I wrote eight years ago, if somebody's interested in that topic, they can click that in the search mm-hmm. and it's still there. Yeah. So you have a, a real big body of work that mm-hmm. lives on forever. But And I think there's some, I mean, we, we did a lot of initial research um, remember mm-hmm. back in 2009, what platform, you know, do we use? We, we, we use WordPress, but there was Blogger, Blogspot, mm-hmm. blog, there was all different kinds. Um, and what was really most critical for us was to determine who's our audience? Mm-hmm. Who are we talking to? Are we just doing this just for fun? What's our end goal, mm-hmm. you know, in doing this? So I think you need to have that conversation with yeah. yourself because it's a commitment. And once you decide to do a blog, you can't do it once every two or three months. This yeah. is, I mean, we were at one point, we were blogging every day. Then our goal was once a week. Now we don't blog as much because we're doing the podcast and it's so time consuming, but yeah. you've got to make that commitment. It's mm-hmm. not a well, and there's a there's a big blog community as well. Like mm-hmm. I know, I think when blogs first started, there was this um, my blog blog role, mm-hmm. and people would share blogs that they liked, and then that would introduce 
you know, people to other blogs that were like yours. Mm -hmm. And so, and then there were some great people who, you know, people really share great information and would say, well, this is um, what I'm doing on my blog mm -hmm. and commenting. That was another thing. If you if you had a lot of comments on your blog, it, it, it brought up your SEO. That's that's the next part of it. Yep. Um, it's a way of kind of advertising yourself without sounding really like an ad. So you're basically kind of telling your story and then as people start to get to know you and like you, they'll start sharing your information and they'll start commenting and then you are all of a sudden become part of that community. I think and that and that kind of relates to um, another reason to start a blog is really to tell your story. And we had a lot of stories to tell like we do on the podcast. This, the podcast is kind of our second generation yeah. of our from our blog, even though we're still blogging. But you hear about this all the time. And we we um, outsourced our social media for about a year to a to a young lady. And she did a great job, but she wasn't our voice. And and that and to be fair to her, mm -hmm. it you know, she's not our voice. She's not our voice. And so and I think if you're not authentic in your writing and in your in your content, it's very obvious and people will not follow. So being your authentic self, being writing in your voice, being honest, I people think it's like, really important. People like it real. They really like it real. A, a phony, you know, mm -hmm. can really stand out. You can kind of tell when someone's not really being. And people love the authentic people. People love to hear about the mistakes you've made. And like the DIY bloggers, it's so great. They'll show you picture. One, two, three, I did this, I screwed this up, I did that. And yeah. people love to see that and love to follow that. Well, and when you're authentic, it it makes you an authority on a subject or subjects. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where then the benefit comes yeah. comes into play. And we have really, really benefited over the years from our yeah. blog. Yeah, it's created some amazing opportunities mm -hmm. for us. Um, the Brizo Blogger 19, which Kelly attended because um, I really Where wanted to go, but my daughter was getting married. Then. Oh, that's right. Then, so I can yeah. go. But Kelly went to that and it's it, tell them about it, Kel, because it was so great. Well, Briso is a uh, is the luxury brand brand of uh, Delta, and so they have the most amazing faucets and hardware. And we we've talked a lot about them on the show, but they created a group called the Breezer Blogger Nineteeners, and I think there's like ten groups of us. I don't know how many of us. Well, they don't 19, do it anymore. 19 it was nineteen. It was 19 people, 19 design bloggers, and we did everything from going to um, a Jason Wu fashion show to we would sit down in their research and development meetings and, and give them feedback on their latest products. And I've never felt so involved with a brand in my whole life. It was really an honor. But one trip that we went on, we had gone for, um, you know, of course, it's always about their products and learning about their products so we can blog about them. But we went to their their big their big philanthropy commitment is St. Jude's uh, Hospital in Memphis. And we went and toured the entire hospital and spent an afternoon playing with the sick children. And I have to say, it was one of the highlights of my entire life. And I I am just forever grateful for that partnership with, with Brizo. They also hired, hired me to design a kitchen for a set that they would then build and professionally photograph to use for their mark their national marketing campaign. That so was talk an about, amazing. Yeah, talk honor. about an opportunity, and really that and they paid only, me to do it. Only came because we had the blog. Yes, one hundred percent. Another another great um, opportunity. opportunity that came for us is through Modenus, and we've talked about Modenus before. M O D E N U S dot com, and they um, bring bloggers designers together, and. Uh, take them on trips that are sponsored by generally kitchen and bath people. Mm -hmm. And we were able to go to um, KBiz, which we talked about uh, mm -hmm. in Orlando. But one of the greatest trips was uh, to Milan. Mm -hmm. All expenses paid to go to the Salon di Mobili, which is kind of like the high point kitchen and bath of yeah. Italy. And so, you know, we had to write blogs about them, but nothing was you know, too crazy. And it was it was really a win win because the sponsors were, were able, amazing, were amazing and treated us so well. And then in you know, then we were able to talk about them. And we loved them. We weren't just, you know, 
doing an advertisement. We talked about the real experiences that we had there, what we learned. And so it's it's kind of it's kind of changed a little bit because advertising, you know, large companies would advertise in Architectural Digest and a lot of mm-hmm. magazines, but they are using bloggers mm-hmm. to advertise for them. You've heard about brand ambassadors, which are people that um, just kind of make people aware of a brand. Mm-hmm. And they, they are using our uh, followers mm-hmm. to... to re- using us to reach out to our followers and getting their word out that way. It's a good use of their money, Mm -hmm. if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, gosh, I mean, yeah, Modanus, that trip to Milan was was ridiculous. And and we love the the products that we learned about and have used them in our projects. Mm -hmm. And but I think another one that we constantly benefit from is the Bloggers Conference. Yeah. Um, it's run by Esteem Media and Adam Japko. And it was started originally, you had to have a blog to go, I think, years back. We, we've been, so, I think we've been to every single conference but one. And it's been running for five or seven years yeah. or no, something now. We've been, it's been in LA, it's been in, it's been in Atlanta, it's been in, where else have we gone? It, it, they've been all over. But um, we're there for three incredible days with um, hundreds of design bloggers, and some not bloggers, but mm-hmm. great, great creative influencers of some kind. And it's in its three days of speaking and engagement, and and just really completely being inspired, networking with the most mm-hmm. amazing people that we have come to work with and know and love it's, in our industry. It's really of all the events we've done over all the years. It's my favorite event. I yeah. mean, you a lot of the same people go every year. There's mm-hmm. always new ones. It's like a it's like a reunion. It really is. Yeah. And there's really really, really famous speakers and Nate Burkus. Oh yeah. Gosh, he looked into my eyes. I swear to God I was in the front row. He talked right to me for an hour and I'm not lying. <laughs> He was amazing. Yes. So those are just a few. I mean, we could go on and on. Yeah. Like, remember the Kravit blog tour yeah. years and years ago? Amazing. And we, we went and we toured the Kravit um, headquarters. And I think the other thing, too, is what what helps us is we get to learn about, you know, kind of their, their behind the scenes. And if you've ever visited, like, a a factory or gone to see that it gives you a whole new appreciation for how things work and it's easier for you to sell it because you you've learned and you can talk about you know the the ins well, and, and outs of so a company. Well, we're so committed to those brands now. It's like, oh my god, yeah. I can't, I can't cheat on you know Brizo because mm-hmm. we've done mm-hmm. this, this, and this mm-hmm. with them, and they're so good to us, and we love yeah. them, and they're you know. So. But for some others, we don't do this. But a lot of um, DIY bloggers will do this, and a lot of companies like Home Depot or Ballards or or a lot of the bigger box stores will give them product. For them to use, for example, mm-hmm. they'll give them a faucet. And if let's just say they're remodeling, you know, their kitchen, and they'll get free product mm-hmm. um, in order to talk about it, use it, photograph, photograph it. it, and it's a great way to advertise, you know, for that brand and the person who has a gazillion followers. So yeah, well, and those gazillion followers have really benefited some of these big time bloggers. Um, because now they're making serious money from their blogs. It wasn't like that in the very beginning. The thing is, too, is they, if I followed a blog, we're going to tell you some of our favorite ones. But generally, if that person, if I really like that person, I've been looking at them over time. If they say, go to Nordstrom's and get these pair of shoes, they're like the most comfortable. You're going to do it. I I really will do most. (laughs) I mean, I listen to what they say because they've given such great advice time Mm -hmm. after time after time. It's like a friend telling you, like, you know. Well, now they're doing what's called affiliate marketing, Mm -hmm. which we haven't become savvy enough with because we're too busy with the podcast and with our full design um, schedule. But we've got some friends who are doing the most amazing job with it. And what affiliate marketing is, is these bloggers, when they promote product, there is a link and that link takes you to where you're going to go shop. And when you do that, the blogger then earns a commission for recommending that product or service yeah. to their followers, yeah. and it can pay. It, it can easily pay a mortgage payment. Let's mm-hmm. just say that mm-hmm. um, it's it takes a lot of work. It's not going to happen overnight, but it's um, it's a it's, great source. It's I mean, a great source. Uh, yeah. Google affiliate marketing, and you'll hear all about it. Um, that could really be a whole podcast. Yeah. Exactly. And I think the other thing that really it's done for us, so if you're a small company out there and you're like, "Ah, I don't know, it feels like a big commitment, it's time. Yes, it is. But to this day, if you Google, um, let's just say you Google 
how to make a terrarium, our blog will come straight up on page one. I think it's the number one <laughs> red blog of all the damn stuff we've written. And but to this day, like you'll you'll um, Google Sherwin Williams, um, Salty Dog, Navy Blue, you know, and our blog will come up. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. See, there's those links that are behind it. I don't understand how all this SEO works, but a lot of times, if people, well, yeah, you do because you yeah. do a good job in well, well getting you, it all. You, you in put there. the links, but you just you, you don't realize that you know you're writing the stuff, and but then three years later, if someone looks up that color, it's going to come to our blog, and you can kind of get caught up in the. You start reading the people's blogs, and you're like, wait, what, what was I? What was I doing? What, mm-hmm. what, what was I starting with? And then. So that gives you amazing SEO. Mm -hmm. And then let's just say that person was looking to use that color and then they looked at our blog and took it to their our website and they're like wow i really like their work let me call them that truly happens mm-hmm. so and if you don't know what seo is seo is search engine optimization so basically in that never-ending goal to get on page one of google um that's what you're helping your website or your blog mm-hmm. to get to so um another thing that others do we don't but you can post ads on your site we get call- and get paid for them yes we get um at least two or three emails a day saying uh i'd like to advertise on your blog. can i blo- can i blog, blog for you and um we don't really want guest posts because it's not our voice once again and the ads kind of uh show up on the sides of your blog and it makes it really really um busy and we just we just don't like it. So, but people can really really benefit from that as well. Well, and I think uh, you aesthetically, our blog is is our blog is a tab on our website. So our whole website's on WordPress, and our blog and our podcast are both tabs on there. And so aesthetically, this is our most important marketing tool of our brand of our company. So it's very important how it looks. So. When we first got started, we not only hired a website designer, but that designer also designed a custom template for us for the face of our blog so that it would be really good. And that's one reason why we haven't done ads is we just didn't want to junk it up, you know, for $100 a month or whatever. I just, we just didn't go that route. But I think you have to be really serious about, about, your blog in terms of just investing in that initial research. You know, what platform are you going to use? Um, do I want to design yeah. a great page? And, and why are you doing it? Are you doing it to gain more clients? Some people, their their job is a blogger. Mm-hmm. So you have to decide why you're doing it. It's, if it's just an addition to your mm-hmm. business, um, that's great. If it's something you want to do as a full time job, that's where you need, need to get involved in affiliate marketing and ads and all that kind of thing. So, but if you're just, not a good writer and you don't have a creative eye aesthetically to make your blog attractive, then outsource it. Mm-hmm. I think you can still give give enough feedback to a writer or to a content manager mm-hmm. to get it done for you because that drives me crazy when blogs a are not written regularly are poorly written and aesthetically the blog does not look attractive images make a huge yeah. huge difference so a few of our favorite blogs um before we run out of time that kind of follow all these things that we're talking about in terms of look good sound good inspire us we turn to them as authorities their content is amazing um number one on my list is Mm -hmm. our friend holly phillips who writes the english room english room she talks about fashion she talks about design she talks about traveling i think she blogs every day and there's always great great information on her blog she's her she she does something different every single day and every day you know you'll look for it it's it's my retail wants it's pinterest um faves it's but her spotlight artist spotlight spotlight is my absolute favorite i i i instantly go and i follow that person on instagram Mm -hmm. and i start researching them and she interviews them and we have found some great great yeah uh, context from her she's a great resource um another one that's really a funny one um, is design indulgence? Uh, it's <laughs> by our friend Sherry it's Hart. By our friend Sherry Hart. She's a designer here in Atlanta, but she puts a spin that's always comical. But she's another one. She is constantly telling you if there's a sale at West Elm, yeah, and where she found these great shoes. Or she works on some really amazing projects. She does a whole thing on styling bookcases. She shares a lot. She shares of information. everything. She shares everything. Her and dog. It's, re- it's yeah. really really good content. Yeah. I, you know, I really enjoy. Well, plus I laugh my butt off every so time. So if I you read want, it. yeah. So if you want to get 
you know, you have to subscribe to blogs if you want to get them in your inbox. And there's only a few that I do because we get so much in as it is. So. Yeah. Uh, but hers is one that I really, I never miss reading it because yeah. I know it's going to be good. And it's kind of short. Yep. Yep. So. So another favorite of mine is is Velvet and Linen by the Giannetti couple. They live in uh, California. They have written, you may have heard of their books, Patina Farm, Patina Style. They're kind of like, I don't want to compare them to to Joanna and Chip Gaines. They're kind of an elevated version, I think. They live on this amazing farm. They have this aesthetic that's very... He's an architect, right? He's an amazing architect. She's a designer. Um, they they travel all over the world. Their style is is very unique. But I just love that they're real people. They're so nice. We've met Brooke um, at many events, and she's so real. And I'm totally inspired by how they live and how they travel and what they do with their kids and their home in California. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So Velvet and Linen, got to mm-hmm. look at that. Mm-hmm. Laurel Byrne. B E R N. Mm-hmm. She's a um, she's a blogger. She used to be a designer, but she's a full time blogger. You've, she's another funny one. She puts mm-hmm. a real twist on stuff. She will give you. She will research things to the nth degree. So mm-hmm. if you want to know about hardwood floors, she will tell you from beginning to end. She she gives the most amazing information. Mm-hmm. So I would um, suggest you follow her too. She has a. A, a huge, huge following in the design industry. Yep, and another um, another friend of ours, Carla Aston. Her is her blog called Designed with Carla Aston. Mm-hmm. She's another one that has super, super good content. Mm-hmm. She lays it out really well. Um, yeah. I, it's very curated. I, yeah. I like. She's a very successful designer, and she mm-hmm. just shares um, her projects. And she's very down to earth. She's yeah. such a normal, great lady. Yeah. Uh, and then Leslie Hendricks Wood, we met her at the bloggers Con- the yeah. design bloggers conference. We're actually we've, we've met, met all these folks. all of these yeah. people, um, and she is another one. She's been um, featured in Architectural Digest. She's been um, she writes uh, for Martha Stewart. She's an an excellent writer mm-hmm. as well as an amazing designer. Uh, Leslie Hendricks Wood, follow her too. Yeah. So basically, our point is. If you, it's kind of like listening to podcasts. If you're looking for information on any subject, I think blogs are incredibly relevant. They should be dependent on. They they are an amazing resource. They're um, they're full of very researched, curated content that is very valuable. Don't be afraid to start one. Yeah, Um, you may not have a gazillion followers, but just be authentic. Be honest. Talk about whatever you're passionate about. It doesn't even have to be very long. Uh, and, that, and, it, and sometimes and it really I get, shouldn't be long. I, I get I get kind of like oh, it's three pages. No, a few paragraphs to start out, and just see what great happens. visuals. Yeah. People, if they don't see visuals, and don't go not in gonna... thinking I'm doing this to make money because it won't work that way. No, just no. do do what you love. Talk about what you love, and you know people will find you. Yep. So our quote of the week, yes, is what do you need to start a business? Three simple things: know your product better than anyone, know your customer. And have a burning desire to succeed. Dave Thomas. Is that like Wendy's Dave Thomas? I think it must be. I love that yeah. quote. Yeah. I really yeah. love it's, that. It's just, it's really basic. Mm-hmm. Just do the right things. Know what you're selling. And and knowing your product better than anyone, I think, circles right back to the blog in terms of establishing yourself as an expert on whatever mm-hmm. topic you're talking about. It could be how to grill the best burger. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But well, even that's what a blog does for you. Even if I'm you. getting ready to write a blog, I end up learning because I'm talking about a subject and then I'll go off into another area. It's like, wait a minute, I don't really know about that. And then I'll go research it. So it makes me, you learn yeah. as you're going along because you don't want to put anything out there that's not the true thing. So anyway, so next week... We are going to do uh, your design questions, like any dilemmas, if you have any questions about anything we've designed, anything about how we run our office, anything related to design or business. In any way, shape, or form. In any way, shape, or form. Send the questions. So go Um, to our website, candrac-cole.com, K-A-N-D-R-A-C-Cole. K-O-L-A.com, and you'll see the podcast tab that I was talking about earlier. When you click on it, on the right-hand side is a green tab with a little microphone that says, talk to us. Click on that, and it becomes this little recording that gets emailed to us. So send us a question, a comment, anything. But if you're too embarrassed to do that, 
You can always send us a direct message. Oh, yes. You can, e- you can email it to info, I-N-F-O, at candrack-cole.com. Just anything that you want to ask. Yeah, because we want to have a chit-chat Yeah, um, but if podcast. you want if you want to be famous and be on the podcast, if you want your voice on the podcast, <laughs> if you want your do, 15 seconds do, of do the, do the speak pipe. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yes. Thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you have a great week, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Join Joanne and Kelly weekly for a lively conversation about trends, travels to industry events, current design projects, the good, the bad, and the ugly, do's and don'ts, product recommendations, and more. Be sure to follow the fun on Facebook. They're on Instagram, at Candrac Cole. And of course, you've got to visit them online at candrac-cole.com for more information.